Bujuanin Tansi, Ojoa, Mashko de Biji K, Indigene Kazgi, Gunto Dem, Anishina Beaki. Hello and welcome to the Kiskin Omakawin web series. Throughout this show, we'll be exploring many different themes and topics that range from land based education, wildlife, water quality, and traditional teachings. In this episode, episode one, we're joined by Carl Smith from Broken Head Ojibwe Nation to talk about the importance and the value and the benefits of land-based education and the future that it holds for our Indigenous youth. Broken Head Ojibwe Nation is a proud and thriving First Nation focusing on providing education and opportunities that can help ensure a positive tomorrow for our youth, our families, our elders, and others who want to learn about First Nations culture. Broken Head has cultural grounds where you'll learn First Nation teachings from elders and knowledge holders. Hi, my name is uh, Carl Smith. I'm from uh, Broken Head Ojibwe Nation. Uh, I'm, I'm a land-based educator for Jordan Principal, plus a knowledge keeper for the community. To so educate and uh, create awareness of, of our culture, uh, sharing the knowledge, some of the plants, uh, ceremonies. And then it went from international tourism to community school, uh, Winnipeg School Division, Seven Oaks. So it seemed, it seemed to spread more than just the tourism. It went to education, and which was really good. Uh, I think it's more educating the young kids, getting them involved more. And that's where the change will come. Land-based learning typically uses an indigenized and environmentally focused approach to educate the deep, physical, mental, and spiritual connection to the land that is a part of indigenous cultures. So I called uh, Canada Almond. And this is uh, like, you use this for your blood purification, tea, roots and that. Uh, if you look at it through a ceremony that like has a mystical power to it and a ceremony stuff, I'm not too much into the ceremony, but that's what I heard. I understand what they're talking about. But I'm not I guess I have lost in ceremony, but I actually don't perform them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> so, you know, but I still got them gaining the knowledge and hearing the story and you know, something that I, I identify with and try to get to kiss it and identify with too. So you could use land-based education as an alternative health for the plants. You know, you could use the plants for your health. You could help uh, your family with the plants, you know, alternative medicines. Uh, it's free. And, and the more you're on it, the more you understand it and then the more you'll use it. So we're trying to get the kids involved more, just to understand more of it and, and use it to what they want to use. We're not telling them to be traditional and spiritual, we're just asking them, look back at the land and use what you can. And that's a start. You can't just start off be, you gotta take steps to get them involved and being outside in, in the area, showing them different plants and walking tours. And I think that's better education than sitting in the classroom. The land, always use it. It took care of us, we took care of that. So that's how it was, the balance between it. But the balance is not there no more. We're kind of out of balance, and this is a way of getting the balance back with our kids. Mm -hmm. Might help with uh, different addictions that they have or different problems. And, yeah, you know, being proud of who you are is not, is not a powerful thing. At least it's not a shame. When you're ashamed, that's powerful. It hurts you more, but when you're proud, that's even more powerful, mm -hmm. so. And this is the ostrich fern, this is the fiddleheads. Like in the springtime, they're fiddleheads. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get the, it's like any green plant, you have all those vitamins in there, D, A, C, car carbohydrates, protein, all that stuff's in there. So, you know, it's there in the spring, mm -hmm. but you can take the root, the bulb, as it's called, or tuber, whatever you want to name it, and use, and that's what they call the loon's beak. And how do you prepare and that, it? That's the heart medicine, it's like tea. Okay. Yeah, like most times infusions, it's AT. Land-based learning typically uses an indigenized and environmentally focused approach to educate the deep, physical, mental, and spiritual connection to the land that is a part of indigenous cultures. These teachings are very important for protecting the land and treating it with respect as our ancestors did before us. There you go. This is pretty well dry. Probably you can't use it, but it's from last year when we picked some of it. Didn't take the whole plant, just took some of it there. I guess a young person. Yeah, it's really dry. But this again is for energy. It uh, endures, gets you going, sweet. And it, I guess you could use it for if you're back in the day, you use that for bad breath. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it does have a sweet taste and it, it does really taste good. I try it sometimes just for when I'm walking, chewing, well, here you go, for endurance and stuff. So when you're harvesting it, it's obviously the root. Yeah. So are you going to be kind of um, 
Is that plant, that whole plant harvest? Yeah, we take the whole thing. We use this for tea and grind this up too. But you take this plant, it, it'll run. It runs long, eh? See, all these plants are connected in one way. It's like a tree. Like, look at the poplar tree here, the aspen tree. That's like one big root too, I think. All these things all work together with a fabric, I guess. You could call it. Could they overlay each other, different things, different roots, different systems. Getting the root here. Yeah, it runs away like a couple, maybe a foot down and crawl and out. You take most of the root out and just follow it. It's good to have a knife, but back in the day we really just used whatever. Okay. So this is the medicine right here? Yeah. So can you see that? Yeah. You probably won't even need to really hurt this plant. You put the cover back up again. So I guess that's the medicine. Yeah, that's we'll the root. That. Yeah. yeah. Take the whole plant and yeah. you use it all. Yeah. Make a tea out of the top too if you want. These teachings empower youth to share their knowledge about the land with others, which will increase awareness and understanding for our culture to develop their own connection to the land and protect the land so we can carry our culture with us. Our teachings are all connected from powwows, sweat lodges, ceremonies to land-based teachings. Look back at prior to contact, we had a system, we had a society, we had our governance, we had our our rules and you know what we had to follow from clan system to the 13 moons, uh, bison wheel, the seven teachings. They all had a mechanism for us to thrive and be prosperous within our own communities. And, then, and as things change with the contact, our lives changed. And now we're trying to get that back into our, into our lives, especially young kids, uh, to have the teachings and everything would benefit the community in the long run. Crumbling aspen, white poplar, as you call it. But this is a really good tree. It does last for you. This is uh, like a little powder resin. And mosquitoes don't really bother you. It was less better than using all. But you gotta make sure you find lots of it to wipe it on. And it, and you like and you could use this for tea. It helps you with your blood purification. Spiritually, you could use it for your heart medicine too, and through ceremony and asking for help and stuff. A lot of the times it is through ceremony and figuring and asking for help. And, and through the ceremony, that the plant comes to the elder's mind and he's doing the ceremony and he'll help you with it. That's how it goes, spiritually. It's not like scientific, well, scientifically you do that, but this is our own, this is our science, the spirituality of the plant and how to use it. You, but you don't you take so much what you need for it as you go. You don't take like all a whole bunch of bark and say that you just take it as you need it. That's what we call we sustain it. We take care of it. They take care of us. So that's that's the balance. 300 years ago, there were people here prior to the treaty, and this was a very important place for medicines, uh, trade routes coming from the east, Winnipeg River system this way, Sinai River from the west, Red River from the south, and north the lakes and stuff. So, you know, this is an important area and it has a lot of significance, a lot of uh, ancestral knowledge from here. Uh, our ancestors are here from eons. So, you know, it is important to us. Every land, every, I think all the land in Canada is important to First Nation, not just the reserves, everything is important to them, especially water.